Super Soccer 96. Over three and a half thousand real players and unique virtual stadium technology. Next generation soccer on Mega Drive, Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation, Super Nintendo and PC CD. The game has changed. The game is FIFA Soccer 96 from EA Sports. EA Sports, FIFA Soccer 96, at last. Loads of options, incredible graphics. It's City versus United, nice one too. He's breaking away, great control, a lovely cross, the striker hits on the volley and he's gone in, oh I say. 12 international leagues, over 3,500 real players and virtual stadium technology. On Mega Drive, Super Nintendo, Sony PlayStation, Sega Saturn and PC CD. Price 44.99 or less. The game has changed. The game is FIFA Soccer 96 from EA Sports. The complete effort to put FIFA together for FIFA 96 is the cumulative work of about a year and a half's effort. The big thing is the, the, the sense that you are there. To me, it seems it's unbeatable. They're going to think they're watching a game on television. I think it's probably the, the best soccer game on FIFA. Virtual Stadium, to me, is capturing the essence of what it is to be a professional soccer player. I think it's just going to be uh, definitely the best game that they've made so far. Before we created the, uh, the first FIFA, we wanted to uh, figure out our main points that we wanted to address in the marketplace. There was 15 or 16 different football games on the market, and we didn't want to be number 17 or number 18 on the market. So we had to be fresh and new and, and innovative. So we brought a new, uh, a new view to the game, which was the isometric view that we, we brought uh, forward, which is now called the FIFA view. And uh, we also wanted to bring a graphical and audio element that hadn't been seen in a football game before. In 96, we had to do that all over again, except we had to release on six different formats simultaneously, and also in six different languages. There's a written script that, that I put together. There's also a lot of uh, prototyping that goes on. What I look at is putting together the right teams in order to get the right mix and the right chemistry going so, so that those objectives can be achieved. One of the things that works here in season mode is the fact that you can absolutely control every part of a season and it's very intuitive, very fast to get to the games and we're really pleased with how it's turned out. And the only way we can get that done is by actually flowcharting, so we break down every screen, every button, which button controls what on each screen so that um, in advance we can work out what will work with the design and what won't work with the design. I mean our goal is, is that the user never has to pick up a game manual at all. Sequeling a game like FIFA is a really a cool challenge because it's easy enough to make it look better because technology is always getting better. The challenge is making it more fun. Right from the beginning of building FIFA, we, we felt it was important to uh, not have the expertise just, to, just inside the studio uh, that goes into the game in terms of research. We wanted to uh, have other people involved that, that, that bring um, uh, s both soccer and gameplay research into the products so we'll make a better uh, football sim. Well, I'm originally from uh, Manchester. I grew up there. 
and uh, started my professional career at the age of 17 with uh, Oldham Athletic. Uh, played there for three seasons before coming to Vancouver. And uh, I played for Canada in the 1986 uh, World Cup Finals in Mexico. Being a player and now being a coach, uh, I had a lot of ideas that would improve the game and, and really make it look uh, more realistic. I felt in the first two games it was a lot of what I call kick and rush, where the ball's kicked up in the field and then players would run around it. It was really more from a, a strategy point. I was uh, able to uh, really describe to them how the game uh, is actually played. You've got to be able to keep some kind of possession and favour the passing team. As we, we went along and we did more and more things, we came up with the idea of, of doing some video footage. We had a camera on the pitch that was on a crane and recording you know, very close up elements of soccer. It was very interesting. Some of the high speed footage that we shot really broke down how you know a soccer player kicks or what, what's involved with a goalie just diving to punch a ball out of the way. It was pretty spectacular. It was fun to do. We used a lot of certain stylizations that you really can't get from World Cup soccer. Um, things like uh, hot, you know, overhead shots and and strong crane shots and uh, kicking balls directly at the camera and, and a variety of quite dramatic angles and shots that can't be attained um, through a conventional soccer type match. It wasn't choreographed because I think that was really important because if it was a situation where they said uh, okay uh, we want to run here and then run there then it, it's not the way the it happens in sports and it wouldn't have looked real realistic. We shot 16 millimeter film for this, uh, quite a bit of it, and uh, that's then transferred onto a digital medium being digital Betacam. Uh, that's then loaded um, into our Avid 8000, which is uh, the most powerful Avid uh, system available now. And uh, we've got about 40 gigabytes of storage and the data is then put onto that and then uh, edit the sequences, making the montages, and creating a variety of interesting textures and transitions to, to make them really interesting and, and strong. In the creation of the storyboards, uh, John Ricks and the producers and myself worked, worked together to create something that we, we would, would envision as, as a spectacular intro to the FIFA line. Virtual Stadium was uh, an idea we had to, to put basic elements of, of our video game engine uh, into harmony. Virtual Stadium is the location where the FIFA uh, games take place, and that's a 3D world with hundreds of objects, uh, with hundreds of textures applied to them, all sorts of special effects and uh, camera moves. So it's, it's, a quite, it's quite a surreal environment, but it's also a very exciting one, and it also uh, helps to build the story that we're trying to tell. We tried to find a, a common design for the FIFA game this year, because we're going to have soccer games on different platforms. First of all, you design your screen on a paint program, you know, Photoshop or 3D package, and you have to basically um, color reduce it to be put in the game. Last year, everything was hand-drawn and hand-colored in a, a traditional classical animation style for FIFA. This year, we decided we wanted a new look, and also we wanted to streamline the process. John Ricks uh, created a soccer player model in Softimage, um, a fully posable, movable model where uh, all sorts of uh, kinetics are involved, so when you bend a leg, the calf muscle flexes, when you twist the torso, the fabric on the shirts fold like, like fabric would. Um, and then uh, taking that 3D model and applying the knowledge that David and Joe both have as animators to create the weight, the movement, the personality of, of the soccer players for the product. Now by using the 3D model, we're able to set cameras up, view it from as many different angles as you'd like. The Softimage program will render out all the different views of the player running in 16 different directions. 
Uh, in the past, each one of those directions would have had to been hand-drawn. So you can see that allows them to concentrate strictly on the motion. We embarked on uh, a product back in 88 called 40 Boxing. I think that was probably the first product in this business that actually used motion capture data. Really what came out of our analysis was motion capture was step one of about 20 different processes that were needed. What we've done since then is perfected a, tech, a technology and technique and process called motion design which is really takes care of step two through step 20. Uh, we have SGI rendered players that were, were um, created with our motion design technology that allows us to, to take any elements of, of motion, whether it be through classical animation or um, rendered data, and retain those key elements and get them into our product. Um, I make sure that the technical aspects of the game are in line with the, the platform that we're doing, and that includes the, uh, the memory associated with the game, so we have to make sure that the game fits and runs into a certain configuration. We run the game overnight to stress test the game. We have two monitors. One is the, the graphics monitor where we see the game running. The other is the text monitor. And when we come back in the morning, we can see that um, the game has crashed or not, and where it happened and how it happened. Uh, basically, if the game is, is still running, then, then we know that the game is very, very stable. In looking at creating a version of FIFA for 32X, we were trying to set out to create a game that, that took on our virtual stadium technology, but we weren't sure if the hardware was powerful enough to deliver it. We had already started working with a developer in the UK called Pro, who was working on our Super Nintendo version of FIFA, and they had just finished doing one 32X title. And they came to us and they said, we're real familiar with the 32X, and we think it's powerful enough, and we can deliver a FIFA 3DO-like experience on the 32X. Now that we're getting close to finally in the game, it looks like they have succeeded in doing that. The cameras move in all directions, and you have a stadium environment that really feels like you're there. When we set out to uh, create a, a new version of FIFA 96 on Super Nintendo, it was, it was a really interesting challenge because it had been two years since anybody had gotten a new Super Nintendo version of the game. We thought we really had to create a new level of gameplay. And so that meant not just tuning the gameplay, but all new features that could really enhance the experience of playing the game. So we created a fast dribble button, which allows you to run really fast, and power indicators right on the player, so you never have to take your eyes off the player. The real focus was gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. So that's how we originally came in touch with the probe developers in the UK. And it was really, really beneficial to the product to sit down with people that just lived and breathed football. Do you, want to, do you want to take it right from there? We got a okay. very, very talented uh, chap by the name of Graham Coleman to do uh, to write the music for us. Because it's FIFA International Soccer, we wanted to go for something that was a little bit more international sounding. So we got a little, little bit more like world influences of stuff happening. We got some reggae, we got a little bit of African tinged things, and some techno kinds of things in there. And it's quite the, quite the grab bag of stuff. The most exciting thing for us is, is that there really are no restrictions now, audio-wise, in terms of what kind of music that we can include in the game. And if you're at all involved in the creation or the making of music, this is like, you know, it's like, thank you, thank you. Now we can do anything we want. I'm hoping FIFA 96 will be one of those true classics. It's right now very addictive to me. And you know, I probably play more than most people will ever play the game, and uh, that's really you know kind of my measuring stick is if, if, if I'm not going to get tired of it. We haven't lost sight of what it was that we originally did when we did the first FIFA, which was make a fun game. If you can create great art, and you can create great technology, and you can create great music for that matter, but putting them together is where the magic is happening. It's a quite a tremendous uh, feat of technology to have so much information and so much strong gameplay. You have people that live to solve problems. 
better the challenge, the more the problems and the more excited people tend to get. I've never seen or heard anything of this scale being attempted at all before. And if I look or sound nervous, that's why. It's absolutely brilliant. <laughs>